Coming up on Focal Point, we take a look at Michigan State's newest interim president. I am pleased with our work, but not satisfied. And two furry friends that have one thing in common. The fact that there's another one in the same building as us is kind of, it's kind of nice. <laughs> Plus, highlights from the latest Michigan State men's basketball victory. We have all this and more coming up on Focal Point. Hello, good morning, and welcome to Focal Point. I'm Brennan Shabbat. And I'm Jordan Wilcox. Today is Friday, February 10th, our first show of 2023. We're excited to be back at the desk, and we hope everyone had a great start to the semester. Black History Month can be celebrated in many different ways, and Focal Point's Chloe Perfirio shows us just how one woman chose to celebrate by using her voice. On an average morning, Raquel Whitaker likes spending time with myself and God or maybe enjoying a hot mint tea. She's an artist. And today, she's celebrating something important to her. It's a day for us to celebrate Dr. King's legacy. Something she's done with the MSU School of Music for about a decade. <laughs> How you ask? <laughs> Through the tune of jazz. Jazz has always been uh, a music to speak for the people. Anthony Stanko is a music professor. He understands the importance of a day like this one. No matter if you're black or white, or blue or green or orange. These musically talented folks say it's a safe place for everyone. Loud and proud, right? Just like if there's something, like I'd rather just be really intense. Don't worry, I won't be playing. The performers are on break. But in just a few hours, this sold out show comes to life. All right. Thank you. Enjoy. Some people come to see their favorite performer, like listening to Rodney Whitaker play the bass. Or to celebrate the spirit of inclusion. That's when I look out into the audience, it actually makes me really emotional to see many people coming to hear this music. The College of Music would like to extend a special thank you to sponsor. But everyone knows when the sound comes up and the spotlight turns on, the celebration has just begun. message is to love and be loved you know I think that's what everyone is seeking MSU continues to offer Black History Month events through the rest of February so if you missed that one there are plenty of others that you can celebrate it's a new year and a new era for Michigan State with new leadership at the top in January, Interim President Teresa Woodruff gave her first State of the University speech at the Wharton Center. Dr. Woodruff spoke of financial ups and downs, diversity and inclusion, and the various successes of students and faculty. With the scandal that led to her hiring in recent memory, Woodruff stressed her view that the university was improving on Title IX and the reporting of sexual misconduct. I will quote, a model for how to address sexual misconduct, dedicating 42 full-time equivalent positions to Title IX cases and survivor advocacy. I am pleased with our work, but not satisfied, knowing how much more there is to do. With the Board of Trustees sworn in last month, the search for a new full-time president begins. Trustee Diane Byram says she expects the search to end by 2024. With a new semester comes difficulty for transfer students, especially in the spring, to feel a sense of belonging. Focal Point's Zach Slowick was at spring participation in January to see what the university is doing to help new students fit in across campus. It is home to over 39,000 undergraduate students each one looking to obtain a degree. But the path they take to get that piece of paper looks very different for many. Ashley Land, a junior at Michigan State, knows just how difficult 
it can be to take an unconditional approach to college. So I transferred here my sophomore year from a community college and definitely coming in not as a freshman is really intimidating. Although entering college is scary, Michigan State and ASMSU's Caitlin Finnerty are attempting to welcome incoming students with open arms. For transfer and new students that just started the semester, you want to make that transition seamless. While also helping to make students feel welcomed on campus even if they're not coming in at that traditional time. How I met a lot of the people I still talk to now was because of participation in events like this. Making friends, having fun, and getting that piece of paper is what college is all about, no matter the path taken. In East Lansing, Zach Slowick, Focal Point News. Students can find more information on clubs and organizations across campus on msu.campuslabs.com. The first few months of the new year can be slow for a lot of businesses, but that's not the case for this East Lansing business. Veronica Bellanos found out why sales aren't slowing down. Deb and her husband Jim love singing and dancing to live music. I'm trying to get people to dance. Kids from the program School of Rock perform timeless songs on stage at the junction. The venue opened its doors to the public nearly three months ago, and Nick Balsoni, one of three owners, says business isn't slowing down anytime soon. We're capturing from different crowds, so the one time a week they do go out, they come here. And it's events like the School of Rock that keep customers coming back here at the junction. Part of the venue's success, attracting customers from all backgrounds. We have people who will come in at the door as soon as we open to grab a quick bite to eat, and we have people who are staying all the way until 2 in the morning. Food, drinks, and entertainment. We have one of the best chefs in Lansing. One of their main attractions, live events, and special deals. We bring in a huge variety of events throughout the week to try and draw from a really, really wide crowd. Every Wednesday we've got, we, it's our country night, starts with free line dancing lessons, leads into at 10 o'clock starting with uh, $1.99 drink specials on Long Islands to reach the college crowd. The 12,000 square foot venue attracts grandparents, musicians, and everybody in between. In East Lansing, Veronica Bolanos, Focal Point News. is open Wednesday through Sunday and their live events are posted on their Facebook page. With a growing selection of places to shop, the Meridian Mall is now hosting its annual farmers market inside. Located between Macy's and H&M, you can buy fresh produce, raw honey, pickled goods and much more as you shop. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the market was usually outside during the summer and inside during winter. But for the past three years, they've been unable to host inside due to the pandemic. This year, they are back in action with more vendors than ever. Uh, we hadn't been in here for two to three years and weren't sure if people would follow us, but it's been a surprisingly strong response. Uh, a lot of our regular people have found us and are continuing to come. And then we've had a lot of new people. The Farmer's Market will be inside the Meridian Mall every Saturday until the warmer months arrive. And speaking of food bringing the community together, Jordan, I don't know about you, but I'm getting pretty hungry. There's a new spot aiming to do just that, and it's taking place in a steel barn. Focal Point Sarah Loftner joins us live to give a taste of the new Lansing Shuffle. Sarah, what can we find inside? Thanks, Brendan. We are live in downtown Lansing, and if you're not familiar though, with this place, it's behind the convention center and across from the Lugnut Stadium. And this is it, a new food hall. Are you hungry? Here's a look inside. So I know that three handfuls is about six ounces. Whether you're an old soul or a young soul, you've probably seen it in downtown Lansing, this big building next to the convention center. Jonathan Hartzell remodeled it. It won't just be another restaurant in a space, right? Like, don't open a restaurant in Chicago. It's just another restaurant in a space that's turning. This one will be something that helps spur the next person who wants to do something next door. Oh, they've got that there. I want to come there for a reason. Hartzell calls the Lansing Shuffle a food hall, but it's more than that. 
there was a point where we do full plates, full hearts, which is our, our Thanksgiving. We get together and we make 400 meals and we take it to the shelters around there. And we also let in homeless people and, and they feed them inside in a warm space. A chef driven meal. And the guy's got a giant turkey leg and all that. And a guy cried and he said, I, I, I didn't know I was allowed to be in a place like this. And that's just what the new owner wants people to feel welcome. So far, there are four restaurants open inside and the chefs like it. You know, it's been a a uh, long time coming and so uh, you know just over the phone having conference calls and all that stuff has been great but now to be able to get in your kitchen and, and really cook and fire up uh, has been amazing. Chef Gianmarco Roselli credits his skills to his grandmother. My grandma always served us vegan she just didn't know it was vegan and then I guess I'm her successor where I like to define it as vegan. It's all about community for Hartzell and he's excited about the shovel's future. Thing for everyone here. Whether you like burgers, barbecue, Himalayan, Thai, or even vegan eats, they've got you covered. They even have ice cream. In fact, I'm going to grab some right now. And if you're nice, I'll bring some back for you guys. For now, we're live in Lansing. I'm Sarah Lochner, Focal Point News. Well, Sarah, we really appreciate it. Hopefully we've been good enough to get some of that ice cream. That food looked really good. I miss you and the American Red Cross held a blood drive on campus earlier this week for Spartans to have a chance to give back to those in need. The drive was held at the Federal Credit Union Club on the fourth level of Spartan Stadium. Donors received t-shirts as well as refreshments following their donation. The blood drive was a part of a blood battle between other Big Ten schools. And for some donors, their reason for donating with the Red Cross goes beyond competition. I mean, honestly, it's not easy to do. You take like an hour out of your day, like every couple of months, and then like you're literally saving lives. And I feel like I didn't even realize like how much of an impact I was having, but the Red Cross called me one day and they were like, you're up to like 60 lives saved. Well, everybody loves a friendly competition, especially if it's for a good cause. When we come back, we'll look at this week's forecast to see if we'll get any sunshine over the weekend. We have all this and more coming right up. Welcome back to Focal Point. Let's check in on this week's weather report with Zach Slowick. Zach, I know mid-Michigan has been on the colder side to start February, but is there any chance that we'll get some sunshine for Valentine's Day? Well, first off, happy Friday, guys. And yes, Jordan, we may have a warmer Valentine's Day this year. It's definitely feeling like spring for many Michiganders coming off those freezing temperatures we saw last week. Now let's kick off our weather by looking at the national map. Over on the West Coast, we are seeing some high temperatures in Los Angeles of 78 possibly, but it's currently sitting at 53. Phoenix, not too far behind, sitting at a perfect, beautiful, sunny and 75. But as of right now, it's at 54, as you can see here. And Houston experiencing some cooler temperatures right around 50 degrees with some pretty heavy winds. And on over on the East Coast, New York is feeling good with a high of 57 and sunshine. Atlanta down south is experiencing some colder temps of 
57 as well and Miami is looking beautiful 78 degrees sunny. I might just have to go down there and get some sun myself because what a weathered forecast that is down in South Beach. Taking a closer look at the greater Lansing region, we still got some winter chills coming, but nothing like the freezing temperatures that we were seeing before. Uh, Chicago is sitting at 39 degrees, Wisconsin feeling the same at 36, and Cleveland is leading the pack at 40 degrees. Currently in East Lansing, we're sitting at 47 degrees. Grand Rapids might feel a little cooler in temperatures throughout the day, but sitting at 46 right now. Detroit is right along the same as East Lansing at 47, and Mount Pleasant is the cold of Michigan at 42. Now let's take a closer look at the weekly forecast. Um, we're going to have a sunny weekend, which is great. A lot of stuff going on all around the country. Um, there might be some Sunday tailgating. Um, and some opportunities to go outside during the Super Bowl and MSU men's basketball game coming up on this Sunday. And hopefully everybody takes advantage of those warmer temperatures. Um, that's all for this week's weather report, Jordan, Brendan. Hope you guys have a fantastic Valentine's Day week. Back to you guys. Thank you, Zach. And coming up after the break, will Tom Izzo and the Spartans build on their latest win? And we have a story about an unexpected friendship. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Focal Point. I'm Daniel Zivian with this week's sports update. And what the world needs now is men's basketball. They earned their 15th win of the season against the Maryland Terrapins. Maryland trailed 15 to nothing to start the game Tuesday night against a Spartan team that was looking to recover after two straight losses. Despite a strong start from MSU, Maryland retook the lead in the second half, making it a nervous final minutes in East Lansing. Joey Hauser led MSU with a game-high 20 points on 54% shooting, and Tyson Walker ended the night with 17 points. With the Spartans in the lead in the final seconds, Jaden Akins capped off the 63-58 win with a slam that had the Breslin Center shaking. They don't have start. You know, don't ever tell me about starts. Don't ever tell me about middles. There's only one thing that matters in this game. You finish the job, period. The Spartans will be on the road to face the Ohio State Buckeyes on Sunday. Tip-off is set for 1 p.m. on CBS. Over to the ice, the Michigan State hockey team prepares for its rivalry weekend series against Michigan, starting tonight at Munn Ice Arena. Head coach Adam Nightingale expects another strong performance from the Spartans after sweeping Notre Dame last weekend. I think our guys have been hungry all year. You know, I think that's, we came into the year trying to earn some respect in college hockey and, and starting to get that, and we still have ways to go. But, um, you know, I th obviously you, you, the fact that we get to play our rival um, and then we're, with everything in the standings, for sure, that I think everyone's excited about it. Tonight's puck drop against the Wolverines is scheduled for 7 p.m., while Saturday's match at Little Caesars Arena in Detroit starts at 8. That's it for this week's sports headlines. Brendan Jordan, back to you in the studio. Thanks for the updates, Daniel. Over to our final story of the day. Everyone loves dogs. It doesn't matter the size or shape. We can all agree that they make life a little better. I caught up with two furry friends who share one particular thing in common, and it's something they're both lacking. 
Here's this week's Focal Point Friday finale. Man's best friend. Even though snow has fallen here in Okemos, our four-legged friends still need to get their beloved time outside. Many owners do their best to keep their pups' paws warm. Hi, Roxy. Even if. Uh, he has three legs. This is Tukey. At the ripe age of just one and a half years, Tukey wasn't born with three legs. Uh, he was hit by a car. But he's a fast learner. <laughs> it's not every day that you see a vibrant young puppy like Tukey adjusting to his new reality. But at heart, he's the same as any other puppy. Hi, we call him a shark. He's a puppy. That's he's. Hi, crazy man. Yeah, he is really funny in the snow with the porch and leaves. If there's leaves on our porch, he has to eat them. Tukey isn't the only one who likes to try and digest Mother Nature. Meet Hobbs. <laughs> he shares similarities with Tukey that go beyond chomping on the outdoors. In the beginning of December of 2021, he got this really bad infection on his wrist, went and got him a full CAT scan and saw that three of his four or five toes were getting destroyed. Once he got it off, he acts like he's like three or four years old again. He is absolutely obsessed with the ball. He loves snow and he's just a little bit crazy. Tukey and Hobbs. The fact that there's another one in the same building as us is kind of, it's kind of nice. He probably feels, doesn't feel less alone, but I do, so it counts. One building, two dogs, six legs. Sit. And still, just two happy pups. He's perfect. <laughs> in Okemos, for Focal Point News, I'm Brendan Shabath. Those two were an absolute blast to hang out with. We did want to let our viewers at home know that Caitlin Wilcher, Tukey's owner, is still looking for a permanent home for him. And if you are interested in helping out, you can email me at the address you see on your screen, and I will help connect you with Caitlin, and I will be your dog broker, so to speak. But that's all for this week's edition of Focal Point. For all of us here in the studio, I'm Brendan Shabbat. And I'm Jordan Wilcox. Be sure to join us next Friday for more. Until then, have a great weekend.